McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Southwest Airlines. Three amazing companies dominant in their industry. We're going to look at them today. We're going to evaluate them using our eight pillar process. And then we're going to use our stock analyzer tool to determine how much we're going to pay for them. Now, I'm also going to mention three questions I want you to think about. These aren't limited to only three, but the three questions I think about when I look at these companies from a high level view. As I get more and more down into it and do more research, I expand those questions. So first company, McDonald's. We're going to use our software right now. So let's go look at our stock search. Let's type in McDonald's. Oh, how do I spell it right first? How about I spell it right first? McDonald's, thank you. MCD. Now let's take a look at the stock. All right, high of 271 last year, 52 week low of 217. It's currently at 262. It got as low as 137 during the pandemic. Now, one of the things I want you to know about, about McDonald's, what is its growth potential? Here is an interesting stat. The US has 330 million people in it, and we have 13,500 McDonald's. China has 1.6 billion people, five times more, and there are only 3,300 McDonald's in China. Now, again, it's totally different markets, totally different food, but the point is there's a lot of growth potential for China and McDonald's. I won't mention other parts of the world like Africa and India and things like that, but that's the point. There's a lot of potential. Question number two I want you to talk about. What's the health stuff at McDonald's? Guys, you remember the, the documentary Super Size Me? Everybody criticized McDonald's. Keep in mind, I'm not some pillar of health. I'm not, re I'm not completely um, jacked. But I'm a healthy guy. I have low cholesterol. I'm in shape. I work out several times a week. I walk almost every day. And guess what? I love McDonald's. It is God's gift to me. McDonald's and Chipotle. Ironically, Chipotle used to be owned by McDonald's. I love McDonald's. But I do it in moderation. But the point is, McDonald's is awesome, and I'm never going to give it up. I don't care if they said to me, Paul, if you eat McDonald's more than once a month, you will die 20 years earlier. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to eat it once a month then. Question number three, what is McDonald's growth plan? Do they have a plan for opening more locations next three to five years? Because McDonald's makes their money off of franchise fees. It's, I believe, the last time I remember hearing about this, it was the, it was the greater of 8% of revenue or some flat amount as a McDonald's store got ramped up. So they make their money off of the franchise fees, okay? But obviously, the more sales that the franchises get, the more they drive the sales for those franchises, the higher their fees are, et cetera. So let's take a look at McDonald's from an eight-pillar perspective. Boom. Okay, a lot of debt. Now, I don't think these are locations because the vast majority of McDonald's are not corporate-owned. They're mostly franchises. So I want to understand this debt level immediately. PE ratio, price to free cash flow, high. Now, if they're high, but they have major growth potential, then awesome. But let's go see how much growth potential they actually do have. Actually, let's go look at a couple things first. Dividend yield, 2.1%. Awesome, right? Well, this concerns me right here. $4 billion in dividends paid. And last year's free cash flow was $7 billion. And the last five years was $5.2 billion. That's a big chunk of their free cash flow. I don't like that very much. Um... Very good gross margin, 55%, and very good profit margin, upper 20s. So not bad here. Good return on invested capital, 10.8%. So let's use our stock analyzer tool here and make assumptions. And again, if you're new to this, I use 10 years of analysis. And also, if you're new to this, I'm Paul. I'm a value investor. My goal is to look at companies as a present value of all future cash flow. I don't let all the stories get in my way. The stories dictate growth. Growth dictates the price I want to pay for the company. The stock analyzer tool will take the growth, the revenue growth potential, take their profit margin and tell me, hey, based on these assumptions you're making, this is what you need to pay for the company. I'm here to learn more because the more I learn, the less I fear. And the same thing go for you. The more you learn, the less you'll fear. If you want to fear something less, go understand it more. You will do amazing work. So for McDonald's, in the last 10 years, they've actually declined their revenue. Now, I understand that. I want to understand why that is. So let's go to our income statement and see if there's a, a big drop in any certain year. Yeah, right here. Oh, actually, it just continually dropped for a while. Now, let's go to their cash flow statement to see if there are any dispositions here. So we go on here. Oh, yeah, they dispose a lot of assets here. These pluses means they were getting money in, which means they were selling stuff off. So they probably sold off Chipotle in there and other things, other beverages they might have had ownership in. I don't know exactly what it was, but that could be an explanation to why the revenue is down. That's something to understand. That's why we look at these numbers in more detail. So let's go back to stock analyzer tool. I'm actually going to go with two, four, and I'm going to go two, four and a half, and 7% revenue growth. Profit margin. Hmm, the profit margin has been a lot better lately. 25, 27, 29. Free cash flow margin. 22, 
24 and 26. PE, guys, it's a big company with not a lot of growth potential. I'm not paying 27 times earnings, but it's a great brand. 14, 16, 18, 14, 16, 18. And finally, it's a big company, well-known with a great moat. I want 12.5% return. The market's going to do 9 or 10%. So I want to give myself a reasonable margin of safety, nothing insane, because it is McDonald's. I mean, the analyze button. Now, remember, for all of these companies we're going to do, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, and Southwest, as we do the stock analyzer tool, rewind it, rewatch it to understand the process of it. I'm just taking their past numbers and looking at the future saying, well, what can I see as a low case? Okay, we have inflation going, et cetera. High case, they do really well. They grow their markets a lot in China, et cetera. Analyze button. All right, completely understood. A low of around 80 to 90, a middle of 110 to 125, and a high of 150 to 170. So for me, guys, I'm going to sit here and put it on my watch list at 153. Now, I've done the stock before. I don't know what I did before, but the whole point is I'm doing all these random numbers and it's probably relatively close. Stock number two, Coca-Cola, similar to McDonald's in the sense that it's a very, very reliable pillar of our community. Now, Coca-Cola has made the best drink of all time. It is called Coke Zero. I want you all to understand something. I'm addicted to Coke Zero. I'm not endorsing McDonald's. They don't pay me for this. I drink way too many of these. And I love these. And if everybody could please write to McDonald's and request Coke Zero to be placed in all their stores, that'd be wonderful. Even though the Diet Coke McDonald's is incredible. So we go to Coca-Cola. Let's look at some stats here. Oh boy, look at this dividend yield. 2.7% eats up 7.35 billion of their 10 billion and 8 billion over the last five years. So this is, this is huge. They eat, and they're probably their plan is like, listen, we're just going to pay the money out as dividends. This is like a boring company. Let's just pay it out to people. Now, when the stock gets cheap enough, I want them buying back their shares. So let's go to the eight pillars tool. Okay. Shares outstanding, not a big deal. Debt, I don't know why there's debt on there, but so it's high debt, but it is, it is Coke. They probably have good brands. They can probably support it. They have good margin, 60% gross margin, 20 to 25% profit margin. All right, not the worst thing in the world. Good return on invested capital. So they can really drive that revenue up a lot. This return on invested capital, 10.9%. So let's go to the stock analyzer tool here. Make our assumptions. Revenue growth. Wow, decrease in revenue. They probably sold off portions of the company. Yeah, they definitely did. Look at those drops. All right, let's go to the cash flow statement. Look at their acquisitions. Yep, sell off, sell off. Other acquisitions, sell off. All right, they had acquisitions along the way though too. So the question is, are they making good acquisitions? I don't know. Guys, Coca-Cola definitely has long-term potential throughout the world for growth. Absolutely does. Absolutely does. I once heard, and this was like 15 years ago, the average Chinese person drinks one Coke a year. And in the US, the average person drinks, the average person drinks one Coke a day. So look at the potential there in China. So revenue growth. Let's go three, five, and 7%. Profit margin, 18, 19.5, and 21. Free cash flow margin, 19, 20.5, and 22. PE, 14, 16, 18. Yep, it's boring, but that's the way I'm going to do it. And 12.5% return. The stock is currently $64. Okay, we need, to, we need it to fall in half, basically. A low of 20, a high of mid 30s, and a middle ground of 27. Now, if you're new to this channel, you're probably like, Paul, these are so low. Go watch our videos from two years ago. Stocks that I said had to drop 80%. People are like, that's never going to happen. It happened. It will happen. Stocks will go lower. We're in a major bull market with major market valuations that are, un that are not able to be sustained, unsustainable. Stocks will go lower. Coke will probably go lower. Look at this. Let me show you Coke's chart over the last, look in 2000. The stock was at $42 a share in 1998. It's now at $63 a share. 50% in 24 years. That's less than 2% a year. Annualized. You might sit there and say, no, it's over 2%. No, on an annualized basis, it's a little, it's under 2% a year. Would anybody have guessed that? No, of course not. Especially considering in 1994, it was at $10 a share. It quadrupled in four years and went 50, it only went up by half in 25 years. Think about that. So final stock, Southwest Airlines. So guys, Southwest Airlines, some questions to ask about Southwest Airlines. One, when are they going to get back to pre-pandemic levels? That's really important for Southwest. Two, with they always did well because they properly hedged their gas and oil prices or gas prices. That's why they were profitable every year in existence until COVID. Pillar number three, 
What are their capital needs for the next few years? I love the company because they stick with one plane because they say, we're going we're gonna to own and operate one plane. It'll make everything cheaper for us. We'll be able to be more efficient. So where are they planning to expand to? And what are they doing for those planes? I remember the 737 MAX that got shut down, cost them $800 million in that whole shutdown process, but it was a very fuel efficient plane and they could probably save money and they will no longer have that $800,000 loss on their books because of that. So let's go to the eight pillars tab. Oh, Okay, not as bad as I thought. But remember, guys, this is all because of freaking COVID. This loss in revenue, loss in profit. Wow, I can't believe free cash flows up. Oh, a lot of debt, though. Ooh, that's a lot of debt. Probably has to do with their plane leases. That makes sense. So let's go look at their cash flow. How did their cash flow jump up that much? Holy cow. Incredible. Their cash flow is up a ton in the last five years. Okay. All right. So even COVID year, they only had half a billion dollars in free cash flow. Let's go to their income statement. So they were doing 20 billion, almost 21 billion at the peak. It dropped to 5.7. They're at 16.7 now. My guess is gonna be pretty back to normal here in the next year. So let's go to the stock analyzer tool. All right. Let's see here. What are some revenue growth numbers? Three, six, and nine. And the reason being they're still below, 25% below their previous high. So I'm gonna go, actually, I'm gonna go four, I'm gonna go four, seven, and ten. Because that's what make up for that. Profit margin. I'm gonna go five point five, six point two five, and seven. Free cash flow margin, seven, eight, and nine. PE. I think they're the leader in the industry. They did a great job making money, and I love them. 14, 16, 18. And you might sit there and say, Paul, you love them, so you're only giving them a 14 PE. Yes, correct. I'm giving them a 16 in the middle. And their price of free cash, their desired return, 12.5%. Analyze button. Look at this. It's very close. When, when the stock, I bought it at 25 after COVID, sold it at 47 because of a covered call, and now it's back to 37. So I might start selling puts on this thing at lower prices. So I might add it to my watch list at 33 bucks. Because I do think the stock at some point is a 50 or $60 stock. The question is when? I don't know. If you liked all these, please rewatch this video. If you want to learn more about our eight pillar steps to analyze, a company, click the next video. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.